What's going on fellow squids? Welcome back to the channel. All my new squids, if this is your first time here, welcome. Guys, do me a favor. If you found this video interesting, entertaining, or educational, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button so you're notified of future videos. I hope everybody is doing fine. I hope you're staying safe out here. I hope you're keeping your eyes on a swivel and looking around, man. There's so many distracted drivers, man. We gotta be safe out here. I want you guys to be safe, all my squids. If you're now learning to ride, if this is your first riding season, please be safe out here. Keep your eyes on a swivel. All right, so I'm headed over to this park. I do not remember the name of this park. I've, I've been to this park like twice. I wanna head over here and I wanted to talk to you about some of my likes and dislikes about this bike, but more so my dislikes. I had, when I was looking at buying this bike, I had two options. At least for me, I had two options. Cause I didn't want a bagger and I was looking for a, a cruiser, but a sporty type cruiser. And this bike fit that mold. It was either this bike or the Indian Chief Dark Horse. I was looking at that bike or this bike. And the Chief Dark Horse was a thousand dollars less than this bike. And the only reason that I bought this bike over the Dark Horse is because the Dark Horse was not available at the time. I had itchy fingers, I had itchy butt, and I wanted to ride, I wanted a bike, and I wanted it now. And the Dark Horse was not available but this bike was available. Now the Dark Horse had so many features that this bike did not have. That bike had LEDs all around, cruise control, traction control, rider modes. The only thing that that bike didn't have was that bike had a four gallon tank and this Loretta S had a five gallon tank. That's what made me say, you know what? I'm not waiting on the Dark Horse. I'm gonna get this bike. We're gonna pull in here and we're gonna start talking about some of my gregs about this bike. I've had this bike for one month, one week today. And since I saw them brought out the new 1200 uh, Sports RS, I've been pretty disappointed uh, in some of the features they left out on this bike. That new bike comes with traction control, cruise control, rider modes, LEDs all around. And they left out a lot of those features on this particular bike. This bike does not have LEDs all around. It only has one LED headlight and the usual uh, circled bulb. Forgot the name of that bulb. And we are going to get into it once I get out on the street. I want to talk to you about some more stuff. But first let me do the Instagram pictures. Alright boys, let's get into it. That 1200 Sportster S had to be in the works for a couple years before they decided to bring it out. Therefore, they knew what features they wanted to put on that bike before they dropped it. This bike was already in development. All they needed to do was add some of those same features to this bike. That bike is, hold on. So here's one of the things I also dislike about this bike. This kick, this uh, kickstand. This kickstand is horrendous. If you look at it, it sits underneath the peg. It sits, up, it sits forward to the peg. Therefore, you have to put your foot under the peg to grip here and then pull it back out like this. You gotta do that to get to the peg. To get, to get to the kickstand. Under the peg to get to the kickstand. So you got to do like this. Under, 
and back. When I first got on this bike for the first time, I was like, what the? F I could not believe it. Ew! God damn it. Pretty annoying. And this bike also fell off the stand. Because these stands, these kick stands are horrendous for for uh for moving. Now watch it. Watch how it moves. See it moves? These kickstands are horrendous for that. And my bike fell off the kickstand. Let's get on the road, boys. So I was saying before that 1200 Sportster was in development for years before they decided to uh, release it. And they already knew what features they were going to put on it. So, you know, they decided to drop it for $15,000 and keep the Lowrider S at $18,000. And that bike has LEDs all around. This bike does not have LEDs. This bike has one LED and that's the headlight. That bike has cruise control. The Dyna before this had cruise control. I'm not pretty pissed off about that. They don't have, so there's, there's still the kickstand, no cruise control. I'm not worried about traction control. I mean, that would have been nice as a, as a 2021 bike for $18,000. I mean, you could add a I'm, you could add a little more feature to this bike. Eighteen thousand dollars after you finish paying for it and everything else, it's like twenty-one thousand dollars for this bike. You got no cruise control. You got no traction control. I'm not a big fan of the rider mode, so I don't really care about that. But it would still been nice to have an option. It would, it would have been nice if they added something similar, but they didn't. What else? I, I can't complain much about anything else. And one of the things I like about this bike is this fairing. At least I gave it a nice fairing. The fairing does deflect a good amount of wind. Not a lot, but a pretty decent amount of wind. I'm glad that they put um, a big Milwaukee, new Milwaukee engine in it. Pretty nice. I love that engine. I love how it just gets up and goes. I also love the fact that you have so many apps to market uh, options to choose from for this bike. My Before I bought this bike, I was looking at the Indian, the Indian Chief Dark Horse. The Indian Chief Dark Horse was like around, I think, uh, 17 between 17 and 18 thousand dollars I'll also put that up on the on the screen right here so I think it was a thousand dollars less than this bike and it had way more features than this bike and it had more CC's than this bike whether it was faster than this bike or not I am not sure you would have to put it up against each other to find out because I think I think uh, I think that bike was like 19 1900 horse horsepower or something I mean uh, 1900 cc's I think it was like 1900 cc's 100 and oh, I forget I'll put it up on the screen the horsepower on that bike and the cc's Harley Davidson usually doesn't post the horsepower of their bikes because they didn't post the horsepower of this bike but they did post the cc's and the uh, torque so but I think I think what they did I think they did post the cc's and the horsepower of the 2021 Sportster S. If they did, I'll post that up here as well. Another thing I don't like about, and not, and not that I don't like it, is that it's a little annoying, because I'm I'm so used to Japanese bikes. I've, I've always had Japanese bikes. I've never had an American bike. This is my, also my first Harley. So these indicators, one over here, one over there, I think on this Forcer as they put the indicators on one side, on one cluster over here. When you want to turn right, you got to hit this right button. When you want to turn left, you got to hit this left button. I do, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, obviously, you'll get used to it after riding it. But what I do like 
about the indicators is, is self-canceling. It's not the best self-canceling, but it is self-canceling, which is pretty awesome. You don't find much, you don't find many self-canceling indicators on bikes, which is, which is pretty cool. So that's one positive. The, fear, the fairing, the indicators, the engine are all positives. The negatives there are, are the kickstand, the fact that it didn't come with cruise control for, for the price that it has. I can't I can't say that um, I can't say that traction control is a negative because I mean it's like if you can ride if you can ride already traction control isn't that much of a big deal. Rider modes aren't that much of a big deal. Rider 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 modes to me is just like um, a retarded for the uh, throttle control. So it retards your throttle control. So to me that's not that's not much of a big deal unless you're a new a new rider. I know they did put it in the uh, Sportster S, but uh, also I don't know who that Sportster. I I just made a video about that Sportster S. I don't know who that Sportster S is for. Unless it's for people who live in metropolitan areas. If you live in a metropolitan area, I can understand you buying that Sportster. And if you live in a metropolitan area and you have money, because that bike is $15,000 for a one-seater bike with 1,200 cc's. If you have $15,000 to buy a bike, would you buy that bike? Or would you... Or would you get the money and buy something with a bigger gas tank? Because that gas tank is 3.1. Would you buy something with a bigger gas tank, a bigger engine, and more seating, and some place to put your bags? Because it is an option. You could you could beat around town like this bike. You could beat around town on this bike and still turn around and go uh, cruising with this bike. You could go long miles with this bike. This bike is multi-purpose. Multi so would you buy that bike? A one-purpose bike, metropolitan bike for fifteen thousand dollars. Then you could put a little bit more money and buy an Indian. An Indian that would be a multi-purpose bike, beat around town and still go up because you have a, a four-gallon tank, whereas that tank on that bike is a three-point-one gallon tank. I don't know. Well, guys, I'll keep the video short. Those are the things I like and dislike about about what they did to this bike. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the bike. I don't think I would do it differently. I mean, I really wanted the Indian. The only thing that stopped me from getting the Indian was the fact that they didn't have it in stock when I went there, and the guy did not know when he was going to get it. The dealership, he was like, "I don't know when it's, I don't know when it's going to come." And I got a lot of people asking about it, and I'm like, "What? What? what? I think it was a case of he wanted a down payment on the bike, and I'd have to sit there and wait for months." before it came in and I was like I really want to ride right now because I don't have a bike and I'm not about, about to sit down and wait on a bike for months before I, I might get the bike at the end of the goddamn season and I still paid top dollar for the bike and I didn't get it at the beginning of the season I got it at the end of the season so I was like you know what uh. all right enough of my rambling I do hope that helps you in your uh final buying making decision the options of this bike compared to let's say the Indian that has all the features you could ever want more features than this bike has I don't even know if if uh, the next iteration of this bike or the next um, the next time they bring out another Loretta S if it's gonna have the features that this Forza S has I really don't know it would be nice if they did but anyway guys I do love the bike it's time for service it's at uh, 1800 miles right now I mean uh, yeah no no not 18 it's uh, 1000 1080 miles so it's, it is due for service I called they said they can't get me into the end of the month so I still have to wait I asked them hey can I still ride it around they say yeah you can ride it around just don't go crazy so I'm not going crazy. I'm just riding around. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time to the channel, a like is appreciated. It helps out the channel a lot. 
a subscribe would be just as nice and I'll see you guys in the next one man peace out stay safe out here man keep the sticky side down and the shiny side up peace Search but you stay lost We are